Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Now today I'd like to show you three different stamping techniques that you may or may not have heard of or may have forgotten about um, and they're great for stretching the use of your clear stamps at the moment. So I'm going to be using mostly textures range of stamps. You can find everything that I'm using linked in the description below and I would love it if you could give this video a thumbs up and a subscribe. So let's get started with the first technique. So the first technique is all about creating a coloured background just for your stamped image. So we all know that we can blend an entire panel if we want to, but what if you just want to add colour behind the actual part that's stamped and nowhere else? So did you know you can actually add ink to the reverse of your stamp instead? And I'm going to do this. Now this is only going to well, it's not only going to work with, but it is definitely the best results with a symmetrical stamp. That's a symmetrical stamp long ways. OK, this is pretty much there, uh, almost symmetrical. It's not too far off, so it'll look fine. So I'm going to place this onto my stamping platform the wrong way. So I've actually got the flat side this side and I've got the text and the image stuck to the stamping platform. So I'm going to now ink this full solid background with this gorgeous Mermaid Lagoon colour first of all, then uh, crushed olive. Obviously the colours are irrelevant, it doesn't matter which colours you use, choose whatever's going to suit your project. I'm going to spritz some water over these two and then I'm going to place this onto my paper. And as I press that down, all that lovely ink is going to soak into the paper. I'm holding it down for just a moment or two. But as you can see, the boundary of that ink isn't really moving beyond where the stamp is. So just let that lift up carefully. There we go. Give the stamp, of course, a good wipe or a wash. You can take your clear stamps to the basin or the sink and you can wash them off properly. And of course, let that dry too. Once that's fully dry, you can take your stamp and you can place it back on that inked area the correct way round. So now the flat smooth surface is facing upwards. I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to stamp this in the same way as I usually would. Now this is the perfect opportunity to stamp it in embossing ink and use white powder to make that look like a resist. But I'm just going to do it this time in black ink. So there we have a coloured image, but as I say, only behind your stamping. This is absolutely perfect if you've got a card base and you only want to keep the colour to a confined area. Now this is going to work for things like butterflies, for things like snowflakes, anything that is a symmetrical image. And you may well find that many of your sentiment strips in stamp form will work in this way too. Next up is what I call an oldie but a goodie. So for this one, I, you can do of course the same technique because it's a symmetrical image, but for this one I'm going to just stamp this in a pale colour. So I'm going to stamp the snowflake in Distress Oxide. I'm going to use Speckled Egg because I know this is a nice pale colour. I'm going to ink all over. With oxides, I tend to also give it a little spritz of water too. It does sometimes blur the image ever so slightly, depends on the look that you want to go for here. Now keeping your snowflake in exactly the same place on the plate and in the platform, I'm just going to wipe off this excess ink that we've got on here. So just remove all of that with a wet piece of kitchen towel. There we go. Then I'm going to take another stamp. Now this one has text on it. I'm not worried about what the text says. And in fact, the text is actually going to be reversed once it goes onto your project anyway. So don't stress too much about that. But I'm going to stamp this all over my snowflake. This could be text, it could be a pattern. Uh, as you'll see here, you're not going to see much of the design. You're not going to be able to make it out as such, but we're just adding some pattern and texture to the image like so and then we're going to fold that and put that down on our snowflake too so then what we've got is a really nice distressed inked snowflake if you've got the outline die you can cut this out it's going to look really really cool on your mixed media projects now if you've got more of a solid image 
So you can really see the effect a little bit clearer. I've used much bolder solid, more or more solid stamp and a large hexagon shaped stamp. Done exactly the same, so I've stamped in the Distress Oxide first, the bubbles or the circles. Then I've stamped onto the stamp, onto the surface here with a black VersaFine Claire and I've gone on with the honeycomb and then impressed that again into the same place. That actually looks like footballs, I think that's brilliant. And another stamping technique that it never occurs to me, some people may not realise that you can actually do, and that's actually ombre stamping. So, so simple to do. So I'm going to use two of my favourite colours together. I'm going to go with Evergreen Bow at the top of this stamp. So I'm just going to ink the top just over a half. Then I'm going to ink the bottom half with Seedless Preserves just like so. Now you may notice I've got quite a harsh line between there. I'm just going to dab over gently with the seedless preserves. You might get a little bit on your ink pad but don't worry it's not going to transfer and the reason I did it with the ever, sorry, evergreen bow is because this is the lightest colour of the two so I tend to do that with the lightest one. One slight, very light mist of water and I'm going to come over and impress that stamp. And there we go, look, absolutely perfect. We've even got a little bit of a blend line where the two colours mix as well. If you find you've still got quite a striking, strong line there, you can really easily repeat this. Just this time, make sure your blend line, your join line is in a slightly different place. And again, maybe just dab the uh, opposite or the lightest colour over the line a little bit too to help the blend. The more you impress this, ink it and impress it, ink it and impress it, the better and smoother that blend line's going to get. So I hope you've enjoyed these three different techniques that you can be trying, particularly if you are new to stamping. There's so much that stamps can do for you. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check out the links down below for everything that I've used. Thanks everybody, take care, I'll see you again soon.